Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Claire, a wildlife artist, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing my process of drawing this beautiful blue jay using coloured pencil. For this piece I primarily used Caran Dash Luminance pencils along with a few Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils as well. I chose the Luminance pencils because of their beautiful soft buttery texture which blends really well and is perfect for capturing soft colours in feathers. Their exceptional range of blues as well really made this piece extra enjoyable to draw. I worked on Rising Museum Board which is a smooth textured paper that really enhances the richness of the colours and helps to maintain that smooth texture in the feather details as well. It's also excellent for building layers which is absolutely essential to my personal process of building up my coloured pencil work. So that's a quick rundown of the materials that I used so let's get on to the tutorial. So as you can see here, I'm starting by building up the eye using a sharp black polychromos pencil. I'm using a nice sharp point to capture the accuracy of the eye, which is the most important part of any drawing. I always say if you capture the eye correctly, then the rest of the drawing will naturally fall into place. So I always start with the eye and using a nice sharp pencil helps to maintain that accuracy. So I begin with the black to pinpoint all the dark features around the eye, which serves as a bit of a reference point helping me to stay orientated within the drawing and also makes it easier to place the next lot of colours. Now I'm starting to build up the white feathers around the face. I'm using a mixture of soft colours, focusing on creating subtle shadows with a blend of grey tones. I begin with a soft base layer and I'm gradually building up the details using sharp polychromos pencils. Then I emphasise the shadows, ensuring that they are nice and deep, which helps the brightest areas of the white feathers to really stand out. This contrast actually tricks the brain into perceiving those white areas as even brighter and more defined than they actually are. So I'm now moving on to the beak and this is where the luminance pencils come in really handy because the texture of the pencils really help to bring out the softness of the beak. I'm also taking note of those key dark shadows as well, making sure that the lower part of the beak and the tip is nicely in shadow to give it that depthy earthy feel. Now moving on to the remaining feathers on the head, I begin by blocking in the general feather direction of the black patch of feathers to establish a basic guide and from there I'm gradually building up the black layers to create depth rather than applying a heavy pressure straight away, which would result in a more flatter appearance. So next I'm moving on to the feathers above the head and this is where we start to introduce some of those blue tones along with a few violet tones as well to create a more cool vibrant feel um, so here I'm adding some purple because the colors of the blue jay on the head and the back have more of a grayish purple tint so we're not quite seeing those vibrant electric blues just yet Moving on to the back, I'm starting with a base layer of silver grey to cover the white of the paper and then gradually building up the subtle tones and shadows and just like you can see here, I'm using a really soft pressure to create those smooth transitions which is pretty crucial when working with soft tones in colour pencil. Also using varying pressure in general is key to building depth and realism in colour pencil. So just like you can see here, this is why I'm using a nice soft pressure so I can gently bring in those subtle tones within the feathers of the bird. Now I'm starting to map out the general feather direction and this part is pretty crucial because not only is it about getting the feather direction correct but also the length and the curvature of those strokes are important as well. These details are really going to help to convey the natural curve of the bird's back and help to give it that 3D appearance. I'm also using a really sharp point and keeping my pencil strokes close together. I really wanted to capture the fineness of the bird's back so keeping those pencil strokes close together and quite small as well with a sharp point are really going to help me to achieve that result. So once I've established the feather direction I can then use that as a foundation to build upon with additional layers of colour. So here at this stage I'm incorporating a variety of blues to create that transition of the vibrant tones while still maintaining that grey purple hue 
um, using a blend of colours including the middle cobalt blue, indigo blue and some of the grey polychromos pencils. And finally I'm finishing off with my blending pencil. I use this pretty sparingly and also with a light touch for a few reasons as applying too much pressure with a blending pencil can over soften the pigment, it can also lighten the pigment to a lighter tone and also if we use too much pressure with a blending pencil it can diminish the tooth of the paper. So after blending I always like to go back in with more layers to deepen the shadows so it's important that I always have enough tooth left in the paper to continue building more texture. So using a soft pressure with a blending pencil is absolutely crucial. Now moving on to the wing feathers. So due to the complex nature of this pattern on the Blue Jay, I needed to establish a method to navigate it without feeling overwhelmed. So to do this, I first blocked in all of the black shapes, which served as reference points. And these basically guided me through the maze of small shapes, helping me to stay organized. And it basically keeps the pattern from becoming too daunting. So with all the black areas in place, it then becomes much easier to identify the remaining squares as blue tones, which I then filled in using a light cobalt blue luminance pencil. So this method then gives us a solid base layer to work upon. It allows us to focus on the more complex elements like tones and shadows without worrying about the structure. And basically this is a method I like to cross over into other birds as well with complex patterns and I find it works really well. The next stage was identifying the shadows within the blue shapes and building up a rich saturation in those areas. This is where the varying pressure really comes into play. So deep shadows require firm pressure, gradually transitioning to a lighter pressure in the highlighted areas. I then used a range of deeper blues to create even more depth, saturation and contrast. One section I saved until this stage was the area where the shoulder feathers overlap the barred pattern on the wings. Because of this overlap, I always prefer to establish what lies underneath before finalizing the top layers. This involves a combination of pushing upwards as well as pulling downwards with small detailed strokes. This technique actually creates the illusion of the two layers slightly blending together. And I made sure to use a dark tone, I think it was the polychromos dark indigo, for the upward strokes, as this establishes the subtle but essential tiny shadows that sit just beneath the shoulder feathers. And that helps to give it that overlapped appearance. Now moving on to the belly feathers, this area is generally all white in nature but due to the placement of the shadows we needed to introduce a few grey tones to establish those shadows. This area is just like the shoulder feathers, it has those very soft fine details so it's important to keep my pencil sharp to capture those delicate lines accurately. Now onto the remaining section of the wing feathers. You can see here that I'm outlining each individual layer of feathers with a dark pencil. This technique helps preserve the edges of the feathers, ensuring that they remain defined even after applying mid or dark colors. So by maintaining these edges from the start, simply means I can retain the feather structure. For example, you can see here I'm applying a mid-tone blue and you can still see those underlying lines. So without those lines in place, I'd lose the shape. So basically this method gives me much better control over the drawing. So just like before, I'm gradually building up the blue and the gray tones, adding more depth and richness to the blues, as well as tidying up those crisp edges. I'm also going to be using a firm pressure on the edges of some of these feathers, just to give them a little bit of a glow. So I'm using a firmer pressure with a light colored pencil. So now that I've come to a bit of an end with this section of the bird, before moving on to the next area, I'm just going to cast my eye over everything I've drawn already, just to make sure that it's it's all tidied up and I've got all the details and the texture exactly where I want them to be. Now moving on to the final segment of the feathers, I'm starting out pretty much like I did with the body feathers by blocking in all of the dark shapes with a black pencil. So this is helping me to establish a simple structure and I'm also ensuring that I keep my pencil sharp for those nice crisp edges. 
Next, I'm filling in the remaining white spaces with a genuine cobalt blue pencil and I'm focusing on just covering the white of the paper with a flat layer of colour. So I'm not really bothered about any tones or how smooth the pencil is or how much pressure I'm using. I just want the white of the paper covered. So at this stage, the pencil texture is quite a bit grainy, but once we have this base layer down, we can then build on that with further tones and layers to start to create that silky smooth appearance. So now I'm going in with the middle cobalt blue using a Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil to concentrate on the shadows. And I'm paying particular attention to the light source, making sure to capture the shadows with a firm pressure and then gradually ease off in the lighter areas with a lighter pressure. So now that the basic color structure is in place, I'm now going to work on deepening the dark shadows with a layer of dark indigo. And after that, I'm going over the entire section of feathers with a sharp pencil using the genuine cobalt blue, as this is the core color of the feathers that I've outlined for this blue jay. So the sharp pencil allows me to push into all those tiny nooks and crannies of the paper's texture. It helps to smooth out the graininess and also helps to achieve that buttery smoothness that I'm aiming to achieve in the tail feathers. I'm also using a firm pressure of this colour and that is helping to blend and fuse all of those previous underlying colours together. I'm then going in with my blending pencil, using this sparingly and also as a last resort, just in case some areas didn't quite go as smoothly as I'd like it to be. And I'm also using this with a light pressure as well, as I still want enough tooth left in the paper to apply further layers. So now I'm finishing off by applying a firm pressure of the black polychromos pencil just to make sure that the black is nice and rich and as dark as I'd like it to be. And then finishing off with a few final details to help with the tidying up process. Lastly, moving on to the bird's feet, which is a little bit of a pet hate of mine. They're never my favourite part to draw and each and every bird always comes with its own unique set of challenges. It doesn't necessarily depend on the species rather than the position of the feet and the light source. So these are the most important factors to consider when drawing bird feet. The key is to focus on where the bone structure lies beneath the skin, which helps to build that realistic shape. I always start by outlining the edges of the key shapes to build that basic structure. And then this basically allows me to forget accuracy and I can then concentrate on the lights and the darks. And that basically gives the foot its form. I also tend to forget about adding too much detail on small bird feet like these as there's simply not enough space on the paper. So focusing on the main lights and the darks to get the form correct is usually my approach. The curvature of the claws is also important since they're usually quite noticeable. I like to exaggerate the curve slightly, but the most important aspect is tapering the point with a super sharp pencil. Also, I like to add in a few sharp curving lines within the feet for those tiny creases that birds seem to have. I usually find the sharp lines create a really nice contrast that helps to bring a little bit more clarity to the feet and also add in a little bit of texture as well. So that wraps up the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this snapshot tutorial of my process for drawing this beautiful blue jay. I really did have a lot of fun working with those various blue tones and capturing the patterning and soft texture of the feathers. It really did make for such an enjoyable drawing. If you would like to follow along and draw with me on the full four hour tutorial class, where I walk you through literally everything, all in real time with traceable line art and a materials list, you can find the link in the description below. If that's not your thing, absolutely no worries at all. I'm just truly grateful that you're still here watching if you've made it to this point. And I hope you enjoyed the video and were able to take something valuable from it. So until my next video, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.